Hi, I'm doing this little video because um, people are annoying with annoying me with their bullshit and stupidity today. So, um, everyone knows I left Nigeria and I also left my house um, because of the things they were doing to me. And about two weeks ago, before I even left Nigeria, I started hearing some of the lies that were coming out that um, instead of doing ceremonies, you know, despite all the pictures that were taken and the videos and um, quite extensive um, recording of everything that was going on, I was paying them to take people out, apparently. That's what I was told to a mutual friend who was told that by a chief and other chiefs and like um various ifa councils and stuff and so i have now my ex araba um contacted me about some of these um lies and they're asking me if what i said was true and at this point i'm just like this is why i have stopped promoting a lot of people in the community that I used to look up to because I'm almost 36 years old. Here is my mindset. If you have a certain title and you have a certain popularity and fame and you've written all these books, then you, um, not automatically, but you should have a certain level of respect um, given towards that. And I do. I give respect to anyone who's um, going on book tours, done lectures, um, uh, made, devoted their life to um, teaching people about Ifa or any other religion or indigenous tradition. However, I also expect you to be very wise and expect you to be intuitive and I expect you to be a good diviner. And what I'm finding out is a lot of people in the Ifa community who have these titles, they're not really intuitive and they're not really... Um, just wow, diviners. They they're okay. They know a lot of stuff, but that's it. And I think the problem is why I get I used to, or even when I was younger, I used to get upset when I was in the community because I would pit people on these pedestals, and I guess I expected them to be better at than me at a lot of things. And then when I find out that they're not better than me in certain things, such as reading or intuition or talking to spirits or even be able to perceive, feel, touch, smell spirits, dealing with the spiritual world like that, and I can and they can't, that's when I got upset. And sometimes, you know, I'm like, okay, these people are frauds. And they're not frauds. It's just they're normal. Um, most people who are in Ifa, they do not go into trance. Um, they do not get possessed. They do not, they're not able to see things, they're not able to predict the future, they're not able to do a lot of things that some Alarishas can or some norm, uh, non-initiated people are, or people who are in other different traditions around the world. So when you, or even in Vodun where it's more commonplace where people talk to spirits, etc. So it's different. Ifa is its own thing, has a divination, it has all its different rules and protocols, and that's it. But when it comes back to the wisdom point of view, and, you know, these people have toured all over the world. They've seen, they've been, obviously had, hey, um, dealt with people, they dealt with enemies, they dealt with haters, they dealt with um, people that lied about them, people that impersonated them, all this stuff. And you would think at a certain point, they would, you would, they would know how to identify the bullshit. So why do I have these elders coming to me um, asking me, uh, were you lying about me? Were you telling, were you trying to get work to kill me? Were you, were you like, this is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. But apparently this is coming out of the Adato resident in Njoko in Nigeria, in Ogun state. Um, these people who I've left, who, you know, I pretty much has stated publicly that they were trying to poison me for a long time. Um, they're now telling people, elders, that I tried to kill them, that, um, all these other things. And I'm like, 
I know exactly how much money I spent them. I gave them because, you know, I have receipts. And if they did all the ceremonies and they had extra money to kill people, wow. Um, even the money situation doesn't add up. Um, but it's, it's just ridiculous that people are even entertaining these lies. But this was all told to me before I went to Nigeria by people in Vodun. Um by Ifa, by um, spiritual, some of my friends. I was even told this last, like last week. So I was just waiting for the other shoe to come off, and apparently today it started. Um, and it's unfortunate because it seems like every time I like get off a plane or I even take, you know, a breath. Before I do anything, there's always this huge scandal of Monroe's doing this and Monroe saying that. And yeah, I did call out a bobble out today. Well, not a bobble out, somebody um, who was cutting people up in Brazil un, um, unnecessarily um, for stuff that wasn't really part of the Risha that what he was claiming. And I, before I say something, I, I go to priests of that Arisha and say, hey, have you ever seen this before? And I go to another region and go, hey, have you ever seen this before? It wasn't during my initiation. I didn't see those those cuts on anybody else in my coven. Um, maybe I'll look at somebody else and go, hey, have you seen this? And I ask Americans, ask Brazilians, ask Nigerians, and none of them seen that shit. So um, if my spirit is saying this is wrong and it's weird... And I ask other people and do my research, and they all say, what the fuck? Then, guess what? I'm probably right. Um, so, if people have problems with me talking about um, people unnecessarily getting cut, or people getting abused, or people, you know, getting molested, harassed by their godparents... And they're talking about it with me, and I actually bring it to Facebook. I'm sorry, because I actually care about people, and if I, no one's padding my pocket to keep my mouth shut. No one's, um, I'm, like I said, I don't have a godparent. I'm not affiliated with a house anymore, and so I can say whatever I want, and I don't have a godparent telling me, you know, you shouldn't say this, or you're not going to, you know, I'm not going to like you. I mean, even if this whole E5 council decides to write a letter about me and disowns me, takes away all my certificates, I'm still going to be a spiritualist like I was in the beginning. Because, to be honest, I love E5. I love the Arisha. The community, I don't really give a fuck about it anymore, to be honest. Um, because it's full of fuckery. It's full of lies. It's full of, full of people living double lives, triple lives. Lies, lies with lies, and I don't have time for all that shit. I don't have time to kiss people's asses. I don't have time to, you know, watch what I say to a certain person because I know about this other secret life and another person doesn't know about the secret life, and I, I'm tired of hiding people's secrets. You know, um, I'm just tired of it. So I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go wherever the fuck I want to go. I'm going to live wherever the fuck I want to live. And if people have a problem with it, whether they're from the United States, Brazil, Nigeria, that got nothing to do with you because I'm not affiliated with you anymore at all. Um, I don't know what all these priests think they have some type of, um, you know, like a stake in my bank account. Or it's like... I never knew I was a public company that people had shares in or that, you know, they're going to get dividends out of because I, I'm not giving you any dividends. I don't pay for spiritual work. That's the other thing I want to talk about. I never pay for spiritual work from anyone. I pay for initiations. I paid for a ceremony, stuff that I couldn't actually do to myself. You know, if I could cut my own head, I would have did it. And a lot of times, even with a lot of these incisions, I made the powder myself because I didn't trust motherfuckers after about mm, the first month into my trip. So I didn't trust even what was in the powder. So I started making it myself. Um, 
You know, they said, you got to do these decisions. I'm, I burned it, burned everything, put the ingredients, and I said, here, you do it. And I did it based on what you fire, what my ancestors said. So, yeah. This, these other people saying um, I outsource spiritual work or I get other people to do spiritual work. Never. I don't even, the only thing I buy that other people um, do for me is jewelry. And that's because I don't have a jewelry studio. And I also will um, commission wood carving. But I can carve wood myself. I can make jewelry myself if I have a jewelry studio. I do all my own bead work. There's nothing that I've learned how to do a lot of stuff in my life way before I even got in this Afro spiritual community. Because most people don't know that I was in the you know indigenous community for a long time. So they know, and I was an artist in the indigenous community. So a lot of people know my artwork. So they know I can do stuff. Um, it's the newer people who just don't know. Um, so, and even with spiritual work, I never got spiritual work done. Most people know I don't do negative work. I do return stuff. I do reverse stuff and whatever happens, happens. But I don't do, I don't outsource from anyone because I don't trust anyone. Why would I trust someone to do work for me when I can do it myself? And if I can't do it myself and it doesn't work with Nambo or it doesn't work with an Arisha, then it's not supposed to happen. I don't like forcing situations because when I was younger and I was playing with the like, chaos magic and doing all that stuff, oh, I can make stuff manifest very quickly. Like I wanted a job, I would get an interview the same week and then, you know, get the job start. But it wouldn't last long because I was forcing just any job um, that I wanted and then, you know, it wouldn't last maybe more than six months for, you know, if, you know, it didn't feel right. And so I went for something else. But I think I basically started my IT career with using Chaos Magic. So it's not like um, I haven't manifested things on my own. Um, it's just as I've grown older and then I've become more spiritually aware of what consequences of my actions both physical and spiritual that I don't push things as much as I used to um and then I'm also starting to look at what are my um views on about wealth and um popularity and certain things that kind of in the back of my mind because I've had a lot of um just a lot of things I've, I've learned I've kind of gone behind the curtain um, with a lot of scenarios and a lot of people where I used to think, you know, they were self-made or that they created this business completely on their own or ethically. And then I found out that it was seed money from either like family, nepotism or, um, illegal activity, drugs, crime, or um, basically fucking their way to the top. So, otherwise known as networking. So, I had a very different view of no networking when I was younger. But I found out a lot of networking is usually through, you know, intercourse. So, um, and some things I'm just not willing to do to be successful. So, yeah. And then even with like my project when it failed, that was a big emotional blow for me, not just to my ego, but just in general, because um, I used to be a people pleaser. I didn't want to disappoint anyone. I would say yes, 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 yes to everything. And then people take advantage of me and then they're still not happy. And then once I eventually get so drained or so tired, I just have to let it go, then people, you know, turn on you. So at the end of the day, I now have start thinking about myself more and realize that if people are going to turn on me, then let me at least um, be doing something I want to do and that I want to um, contribute to the world and have my vision as opposed to other people steering it and distorting it or copying it. So, um, 
yeah, that's just about it. I think because this video, I just want to talk about just some of the things that are going on that were a little crazy. Um, it's, it seems like I always have issues when I leave. Um, I, and it's my, like my, my parents are telling me, they're like, it's the type of people that you're always dealing with. And it's no, it's not the type of people because I encountered the same thing in every tradition and every religion and every racial group. It's something about me. And even my dad was talking about it today. He said that when he took me around when I was a kid, I would, he would go in a store and people would just huddle around me. And that it was like wherever he went, like there would always be people. And it was just, it wasn't, he said it wasn't me. It wasn't him, it was me. It was like something about me. It's just people always gravitated to, even since I was a child. And so, you know, I, you know even in college, I noticed that I would try to hide and wear a black hoodie over my head and hide in the, the back of the cafeteria when I wanted people to leave me alone and people, some random person would come over to my table even though I'm surrounded by empty chairs that would sit right in front of me and, you know, say, hi, how are you? And some days I just really want people to leave me alone. But it's something I just can't fight and it's something that I can't hide. Um, I can't hide me. I mean, if I wear a full, like, Muslim garb, <laughs> like a burqa with just my eyes showing, somebody still comes towards me. There's no, I, You know, I can't hide from humanity and I can't hide from just myself. So people are always going to notice me. So it's not me. It's just what it is. And then I have people who tell me I'm arrogant or I think I'm superior to other people. And that I'm trying to be attention. And I'm trying to get 15 minutes of fame. And I'm like, no, I actually want to get out of the spotlight. But I can't. It's just what it is. And... It doesn't matter if I'm out of Facebook, I turn turn off my account. It, you know, as soon as I come back, there's messages after messages or, you know, like, on Instagram. Even when I was in Africa where I wasn't talking as much, you know, I had many different messages and stuff. Or it's just even stuff from old videos and et cetera. But I, you know, this is me and it's not changing. I'm always trying to work on myself and, you know... You know, my weight may go up, may go down. It may, it may, you know, I might cut my beard. You know, I might get piercings. I might take them out. It's, it's just, I might get tattoos. I have all these, you know, some of these incisions and scars are going to disappear. It doesn't matter. It's still me. And I still am a spiritual person. That's never going to change whether I work in IT or I do something completely different. Um, you know. I'm just happy that people are interested in my spiritual journey and interested in my um, continued evolution. And then I try to help people um, directly and indirectly um, while I do that by, by telling my story and by um, just showcasing, you know, not just the pretty side, not just the happy side, but everything that happens. Um, I think I try to be authentic with what I say and then I still have people tell me I'm lying and, you know, they can't believe certain things and I'm just like, okay, I'm showing pictures of like scars and cuts and infections and other stuff and you still believe that it's fake. Well, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> um, it, it's like... It's like the more I show, the more people say I'm faking it. And I'm just like, I really don't have the time or the budget to do movie makeup or, you know, to have a production. You see, I'm like, this is in the bedroom. It's not, I'm not like, you know, I never do high production YouTube videos. It's always in my room or somebody else's room or a hotel room. I don't really give a fuck. This is all on my iPhone. So, yeah. Um, I tried to be just as real as possible, and people still say I'm fake. So that at this point, I don't give a fuck anymore, because um, it seems like someone's always going to have a negative comment. I'm always going to trigger someone. Um, there was some person talking, saying I was talking shit about Condom Blade, and I was talking, I was actually talking about people doing bullshit in Ifa in Brazil, and he was talking about Condom Blade and all this other stuff. And then when I brought out, I actually look at his picture, and I'm like, this guy's a white guy, like he's a white Brazilian, and he was all talking about. African ancestors and all this stuff, and I'm just like, dude, like, 
you're like white and I'm black and you're telling me, talking to me like you know more about African ancestors than I do. And I was like, don't you think that's kind of fucked up? And then he started calling me racist and I was just like, no, the problem is that you start out saying that I think I'm better because I went to Nigeria and I'm like, you are mad that I have the luxury to go to Nigeria because Going to Africa is very expensive in Brazil, and most black people in Brazil are not wealthy. And they're also not super well-educated either. So, in their viewpoint, if a black man can do that, um, you know, it must be something illegal. They must be ripping off people, or, you know, something must be wrong with them because... um. Black people are not able or should not be able to afford to do more things than white people. And that's not just in Brazil. That's in America, too. And Latinos and a lot of Latinos have that view in their head, too. And it's a subconscious program based on racism. And they don't think they're racist. They say, oh, we all have black in us and all this other stuff. But that's what it is. You have this view that a black person should not be able to do more than you in anything. Especially not education or wealth or knowledge. So, sorry to fuck up your bubble. (laughs) I I mean, I'm a very complex person. Um, There's a lot of, I'm a mixed person. There's a lot of things that fuck with people about me that will fuck with people. Because they say, this is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to go together. And then they go to Ifa and they say, you know... And if I was like, yep, it's right. Yep, he's supposed to be here. You know, it doesn't matter what spirit it is. They're like, yep, he's supposed to be here. Sorry. It is what it is. And that's it. I mean, I'm no longer going to apologize for being Monroe. I'm not going to apologize for me myself. And I... A lot of the stuff, like I had one friend saying, I'm finally talking about people stealing my work. Yeah, I'm going to start reporting people more for that. Not just casually, I'm not talking about just casually posting my pictures or just sharing stuff. I mean, actually copying it, putting your name on it, putting your temple name on it, um, putting it in journals, using it for artwork, printing it out. That's going to stop. And if, you know, I'm going to be more aggressive with it in any way I can. So, because it's not fair that I spent since 2015, summer 2015, working on a project and doing that many illustrations and different versions of those illustrations. And then other people who have nothing to do with the project, the process, nothing, contribute nothing to the project, um, don't even like me, actually hate me. Want me to die, and they're still using my my shit for profit. So that's kind of crazy to me. Um, but that's what the way people are in this quote unquote spiritual community. So that's it. Um, yeah, copywriting that would be, ooh, that'd be like a like an initiation right there because it's like. I'm not even I'm not even kidding. It was over five hundred, probably close to six, seven hundred images, just all the different versions. Which I all which I have all of them on hard copy. But people act like I don't. Like there's they're backed up on many different external hard drives and um Dropbox, different Dropbox accounts and then, you know, Google Plus and that. it's on a lot of places where my artwork is and then I always have Um, any of the, yeah, it's on multiple places. And then also any of the artists I work with, they also have copies as well. And it has a copy of the copyright. So yeah, that's the other strange thing. When I actually collaborated with other artists and there's multiple copyrights attached with that, that people try to steal. And it's like, yeah, it's not just me. It's other people who's going to be fighting as well. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I inspire everyone, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is just my, my, uh, I guess my live talking about 
things are going on. It's just really crazy because, you know, when you do initiation, so Risha, Vodou, and you come back, you're supposed to, you know, progress and um, just look forward to different changes in your life. And I, I mean, I've gone through many different changes and I've seen things from a different perspective. And, you know, I do see the world in a much different way. And my eyes are really open to what's, you know, what I wasn't really seeing before. But now it's like you, when you start to see things differently, you also see, you know, the things that are kind of hidden in front of you. And I've had to let a lot of people go. And I've had to let people let themselves go because um, I found out that quite a few people have blocked me in the past couple months for whatever reason. Um, Yeah, I'm inspiring people that claim to have an issue with me. Yeah, there's people who have issues with me who follow me on Instagram and they like like every post. That's the funny shit. <laughs> that is really funny. It's like you write, you've written whole posts about me, and then you you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> um, and you're like, "Oh, this is nice." And I'm like, "Wait, don't you hate me?" <laughs> like, <laughs> um, or they follow me with a a dummy account. It's just kind of crazy. Um, on Instagram, I have three different accounts. So yeah, because. I also had people try to take down my Instagram. They had people try to, they took down one of my YouTube channels. So the one I have now is the I only have like a thousand subscribers, one point three I think. That's I used to have like sixteen thousand, but you know, that was taken down. And then the Facebook one, they keep trying, but they can't because I've had it for fifteen years. So they can't say it's fake or anything because it's not. And yeah, so, yeah, people try, whatever, it is what it is, devil's a liar, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm pretty honest, if I don't like you, I'm gonna tell you I don't like you, I don't care what is your, pro- your what is your position, if you're a cop, if you're a politician, if you're a robber, and I'm saying, I don't really like you, I don't really... I mean, some of these people should ask some of the other robbers. I told them, like, I had another robber where, you know, his his godson ripped me off. And 